Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here, coming at you from the Knife Center for 2022's first New Knives of the Week video, where we take a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. First thing up this week, we're starting off the year right with a couple of new exclusive drops. First and foremost, new Enrique Pena's, the X-Series Lanny's Clip with our exclusive burnt orange canvas micarta. This guy comes in at about 274 bucks. You've got that M390 blade, just over three inches, about three and an eighth. Two-tone finish, uh, satin grinds on the blade itself, really deep hollow grind, making sure the edge itself is kept nice and thin, even though it's not the thinnest blade stock to begin with. And you've just got that classic slip joint style clip point profile to the blade. But of course, this is not a slip joint. This is a frame lock with inlays over the top or onlays over the top, or uh, you could call it a bolster lock. Some people like to call it that. It's a frame lock. I, I consider it that way anyway, with that cool micarta handle scale material on top of it. And cool thing about this material is this is one of those micartas that has a pretty dramatic shift as kind of the oils of your hand start to work into it and you carry it a little bit. Looks a little bit more on the raw side to start with, but over here, I've got one previous exclusive with the same material that's been carried a bit. And you can see right on top that deeper red color, kind of reddish orange, ruddy orange that works its way to the forefront. Really cool stuff, I do think. Really like that material a lot. This is a front flipper or a top flipper, if you want to call it that, which means you can finger flip it just like a traditional flipper tab, except on the top rather than the backside, or you can do the thumb actuation like any other front flipper. Really like those, uh, those executions of a flipper style there because you get the best of both worlds. And I usually find them a little bit easier to front flip than actual dedicated front flippers tend to be, which is also pretty cool. Milled pocket clip, titanium, the liners or frame itself, not liners, but the frame is titanium with the integral titanium bolsters uh, to the slabs itself. But overall, just a really great representation of a classic style of profile updated with modern locking convenience and high-end materials. Really cool stuff. All right, next up, we have got actually a restock of our automatic Quakens from Boker, but made, of course, in the USA by Protec. So you've got that really great Protec build quality and action on this, at this point, kind of classic Boker profile designed by Lucas Burnley. Now there's two versions of this. They both have a three and a half inch blade with that kind of upswept Quaken style of blade. Actually a little more reminiscent of classic Quakens or uh, classic Tontos as opposed to an American style Tonto. Um, but you can get it in the black coating here or in a stone washed finish, 154 CM steel on both of them. And the hardware on the handles is gonna match the blade. You can see here we've got a black pivot, black firing button and pocket clip. If you get the stone washed version, uh, those will match the blade rather than being black in this case. About 200 bucks or about 199 exactly for the black version. The stone wash will save you about 10 bucks. Now the handles are our exclusive flat dark earth color for this model. They're made out of aluminum. You've got that really nice anodized finish, really cleanly done, and nice little bit of contour to the handle as well. So even though it looks kind of straight and slab sided, it actually feels fairly comfortable in the hand. It's obviously not an ergonomic grip, but it's going to feel pretty good when you put the knife to use. Just like all the Quakens, the blade pretty much completely disappears in the handle when it is closed. You can just barely see it here from the side. Hit the button though. Like I said, great ProTech action. All right, next up, we've got another American made knife, uh, another premium American made knife, more premium in fact. Uh, this is a Spartan the SHF 3.25, otherwise commonly, more commonly known as the mini SHF folder, which you're not gonna find it if you type in mini SHF into our, uh, our search bar, make sure you pop in the 3.25, but it is the smaller version of the SHF. 
This one right here with the Nichols Damascus blade comes in at about 545 right now. So not a cheap knife at all, but you are getting premium build quality right here from the States. Three and a quarter inches on that blade, same drop point profile you're used to, just a little smaller, high flat grind. Actually, or is that, does that feel a little hollow? No, that's a, that's a flat grind. Um, just good all around performer, looks great with the Damascus and the finely finished titanium handles. Just a little bit of accent with the kind of bronze anodized hardware all around, really cool. Frame lock holds things nice and tight when it's open and it's gonna carry really nicely in the pocket, Not to, doesn't take up a bunch of room. Easy to pop the blade open if you'd rather not walk the blade a little bit slower, but no ball bearings in the pivot here. You're dealing with a very finely tuned washer-based pivot system that is gonna be much less susceptible to things like dust and debris as you go about your daily life. All right, next up, this transition almost writes itself. We've got another Damascus bladed Spartan, but this is, the model name is the Spartan in this case. This is a PMP Knives Spartan. Standard sized, again, another knife with about a three and a quarter inch blade. And you can see, depending on how that length is drawn out, you can have something with a very different personality between these two guys. Because of course, we've got this nice broad, Thomas? Reverse Tanto. Reverse Tanto Spay drop clip point blade right here. Uh, three and a quarter inches, really nice profile. I've carried one of the standard versions of these for a little while, uh, just to kind of test it out. I really like the full flat grind on it, slices, very nice. Uh, price on these Damascus versions is about 160, and you can get it with natural or the green canvas micarta that you see right here. Metallurgically, this Damascus comes with a VG10 core, so you've still got nice, clean cutting performance, very nice grained steel. It's gonna sharpen real easily and take a nice edge to boot. Single position pocket clip here, right side tip up, high polished silver clip, has a nice classy presentation to it and a couple of different opening methods with this knife as well. You don't get the same kind of top flipper ease that you would get with that Pena up front, but I still found this particular iteration to be plenty easy enough in your standard front flip, thanks to the nice oversized squared off tab right there. You can also just kind of slow walk it like an old school friction folder, or you've also got the thumb cut out. Use it with your thumb, or you can do the middle finger flick as well. Ergonomics doesn't really fill the hand so much. It's more of a tapered style towards the back. Gives you a little bit better fine control over the blade, which is kind of a nice, uh, nice twist on a broad patterned blade like this. Still enough there to get a Gorilla Grip on when you need it, but still easy to control as well. All right, next up, kind of like the Pena up front, we've got another quote unquote mid-tech knife. This is from Eric Ox or Eric Oaks. Actually not quite sure how you pronounce his last name. If you're, if you're watching Eric, chime in in the comments. Um, but this guy right here is one of his production series folder. This is the Osprey EDX flipper. Comes in about 330 bucks. With it, uh, there were a couple of handle materials um, a few days earlier than this. They have been getting bought out fairly quickly, so the only ones we have left while we're filming right now are the green micarta inlaid versions. And if they are sold out by the time this video drops, I am very sorry about that, but I really like the knife and did want to show it to you guys. Now here's another knife with a three and a quarter inch blade. This time we've got M390 steel and it's got a two-tone finish, almost identical to that Pena from up top. Uh, and in fact, Enrique usually uses Riot, and that is who he used for this knife to do his OEM work. And the finishing details on this Osprey are pretty much identical. I'm pretty positive this is also a Riot made knife, but I don't have full confirmation of that right now. But they feel just about identical in terms of build quality, which is to say pretty much perfect, world-class for sure. The handles are titanium. You've got a nice section here milled where a bolster might typically sit with kind of a diamond tread pattern. As far as the texture it gives you, it gives you a lot of it. It's not super sharp, but it is definitely very grabby as you can see. Gonna give you a nice bit of peace of mind right there. 
The inlays are handled really well with the micarta here. Like I said, there were, uh, were some other options and maybe in the future if we can get our hands on some more. Milled pocket clip ball bearings in the pivot and that frame lock for security. In terms of opening action, you do have that dual milled out section here, kind of like a fuller that you would be able to two hand open it that way. You actually have a very easy grip on it when you pinch. You could probably, yeah, you can, you can one hand open it that way too. It's a little bit tricky. You gotta make sure you're not putting a little pressure on the lock bar, but it works. And then of course, you're probably just gonna be using the flipper anyway. Blade design is really nice, very modern of the moment. You've got that drop point profile with a very acute tip. So you get the best of both worlds, pretty decent slicing, hollow grind behind it, and that very nice tip for piercing and opening packages which is what most of us do with these knives anyway. All right, next up, we're gonna go to Italy with the hug. It's a nice warm hug of a knife uh, from Viper Knives. Several, several different versions of this. Uh, this one right here, I'll start out with the full titanium one. Similar diamond-like texture to that, uh, that Osprey we just looked at. Also an M390 blade, this time just under three inches and about 150 bucks for this particular one. Really cool blade shape going on. Kind of got a modified Warncliffe with a bit of a harpoon type or harpoon style to the spine going on. Full flat grind and a swedge. Really nice shape. Gonna pierce pretty decently. Be careful, this is a slip joint, however. It's not a locking blade, but the tension on the back spring is pretty stiff, which in this case, actually in a lot of cases on some premium slip joints is a very good thing because you get that awesome snap, you get that cool walk and talk, and you get a little bit more security over a weaker spring. The spine is crowned, it's an Italian knife after all, and that extends into the backspacer, but you've got a high polished finish along that entire section, which don't, don't typically see that as much from these guys. Handle length, I've got slightly larger than average hands, and. I've got plenty of room to hold on to there. And yes, if you're keeping count, that's the first reference to my hand size of the new year, I do believe. On tape at least. Um, well, yeah, like I go around telling people my hand size just day to day. He does. That's Thomas over there, everyone, if you're not familiar with him. Thank you very much. Cool knife. Um, it also comes with a nice leather pocket slip as well. So no pocket clip, but it is going to sit pretty nicely. Actually, which way is it better? That's way, that way right there is a little better. Gonna protect the knife from other things in your pocket and protect other things in your pocket from the knife. It'll keep things looking nicer longer. If you do want a uh, pocket clip with this knife, however, I'd say check out the MKM magnetic knife sheaths. This should fit in one of those quite nicely. It basically is a leather slip like this with a little magnetic strap that'll loop around the outside of your pocket and allow you to pocket clip carry one of these knives. Um, that is one of the full titanium versions. There's a few different patterns. There's also several different inlay options, several both with and without the bolster here at the tail. They all have the uh, titanium bolster. Is it titanium? Yes, it is titanium bolster here at the front. Some with, some without the tail side bolster. This one obviously is with. And this one has the dark matter blue carbon fiber scale. So it's a marbled carbon fiber with kind of streaks of blue in it. There's micartas, there's G10s, there's an ivory micarta I think looks especially nice. Uh, same blade profile and steel materials. This one right here about 188 right now. All right, next up, we've got a couple new versions of the Viper Barris, an EDCable fixed blade. Again, M390 steel, we're seeing a theme here, just over two and a half inches on these guys. And basically the big difference now, we've got new handle materials and it's the first time I believe these are available with the black coated blades, giving a completely different feel to the satin versions from before. Uh, price on these about 147, 148 in that kind of ballpark. You've got the Barris one with the drop point blade full flat grind M390 steel. As far as dimensions, the blade steel is not super thin. They wanted to give you something with a bit of stoutness to this short profile so that it could kind of punch above its weight a little bit. 
and then the micarta handles add a little bit of grip width there just enough to get a solid hold on it without feeling like it's really shrimpy in the hand the micarta feels nice you're going to get that nice texture especially when wet as well thanks to the matte finishing going on there uh, you can get that in green or the natural g10 options as well uh, jade a nice red g10 here that i really like especially against that black and on this one you've got the more aggressively shaped sheep's foot profile on this particular guy same thing other than that you've got the full flat grind you've got the m390 steel you've got the stout stock to be able to push it a little harder if you need to as far as carry we've actually got a ton of options uh, and the way they did these sheaths is actually really nice it'll fit either the drop point or the warrant or the sheep's foot blade interchangeably because of the way they've molded it but they both hold in there quite nice comes fitted with an ulti clip so you could pocket carry this real easily you could carry it inside the waistband really easily easy to set up as a neck knife carry thanks to all the holes and i believe this should fit some things like the uh the popular tech lock series actually it's a little bit off for the full size tech lock let me check the mini right here the small tech lock yeah the small tech lock is perfect if you're looking for a different style of belt attachment for this particular guy but in any case you've got tons of options to suit pretty much whatever you're gonna need carry wise all right next up we've got some new half breed blades knives this week uh, medium clearance fixed blade with a new shape to me on this knife a very aggressive recurved tanto price on this is about 235 right now blade length about four and a half you've got d2 steel very thick which is going to help aid in the toughness of this particular knife make that steel a little bit stronger and that blade profile very aggressive you've got the characteristic of kind of american style tanto construction you've got a very robust tip thanks to the thickness of the blade and the flat grind there and then on the recurve section you've got a hollow grind to keep things thinner it's going to work very well at piercing or i shouldn't say at piercing so much but it's going to stand up to heavy strokes while piercing and then on the draw cut that recurve is going to aid in the shearing and cutting power on the way out also going to work really well for utility stuff like cutting rope that sort of thing it's going to be really nice the handles are g10 you've got this aggressive mountain style texture going on if you're really working this knife hard i would recommend gloves on this particular finish that way you get the benefit of the extra traction there without the potential or as much potential for hot spots in use but all of these half breeds are always built really well and the sheaths really do the knives justice too it's also another high point i think of most of their designs well pretty much all of their designs really really well done kydex the snap is excellent the edges are finished very well comes equipped with a i think this is the uh the dots style tech lock maybe it would help if i unlock it that gives you uh shows you one of the advantages of this particular style but again this is also going to allow you to carry it in standard fashion like this but you could also invert it or carry it horizontal very easily thanks to that attachment and actually one of the things you get from this dot style attachment as opposed to a standard tech lock you can see the inside of this has some curvature to it so it's not a completely flat piece so especially if you're carrying this well i shouldn't say especially if you're carrying this one way or another but depending on how you carry it and how you personally are shaped it could help hug things a little nicer not to be confused with that nice hug we looked at before one of two half breeds to show you this week next we have another medium infantry right here uh, this was the medium clearance this now is the medium infantry you've got a longer blade about 5.3 inches still you've got d2 this shows one of the other standard finishes the dark earth in addition to the green we just saw there's also a dark uh, dark gray or black but a black style knife very aggressive shape here as well you've got a tanto profile an interesting spine treatment going on not quite as robust a tip as the medium clearance we just looked at but still very very strong no recurve but if you are looking for some aid or some additional help on rope and fibrous materials you do have a partial serrated section here at the heel of the blade itself 
handle has a little bit more going on for it in terms of hand comfort without gloves because you don't have that mountain tread texture. It's going to fill the hand a little bit better. Actually fills the hand really well due to the thickness here. Has a solid grip. You've got a thumb scallop here or thumb scallops here at the leading edge for finer control over that blade and a little bit more of an aggressive protruding pommel here at the back. If you look at these two knives, actually the handle profile is pretty much identical, uh, but the compact clearance takes a little bit off here right at the back. And then of course you've got the scalloped texture on this one as well. And I don't think I mentioned the price on this guy yet. Um, same price as the previous knife, both of them about 235 right now. All right, next up we've got another tactical fixed blade, in this case a little bit smaller than the previous knives we've looked at. This is a Condor. As you can tell, this is the Credo, a Tony Leonard's design. 78 bucks for this guy, so quite affordable for this size of a fixed blade in general. You've got 440C steel with a bead blasted finish. It's going to help keep reflections way down and a really nice shape to it. I'm not entirely convinced by the finger grooves on this particular design, but the overall flow works really well. The clip point shape, I dig that, flows in nicely to the handle, which is paper micarta, by the way. Really nice high gloss finish going on there, nicely polished and full tang construction. Despite those finger grooves being kind of small and not matching up to my fingers at all, uh, if you've had have a smaller hand size, it would fit uh, your finger shape a little bit nicer. But even despite that, if you kind of ignore that they're there, the rest of the handle really kind of makes up for it a little bit. You've got a good swell or a good contour to it, locks into the palm pretty nicely. And if I choke back a little bit so that I hit those grooves a little bit differently, if I'm going in kind of a forward piercing motion with this, it feels pretty great. You have that big aggressive finger groove right at the front that's going to give you some index finger protection. Not quite as much as a big protruding guard you might see on something else like this half breed, but not nothing either. Now this is not just a tactical blade either. The blade itself is thin enough that I think it's going to make a really excellent EDC if you can carry a knife of this size on your belt, which is the method provided with the sheath. You've got classic styled leather here black, already wet formed essentially, or, or maybe not completely, but formed really nicely. It kind of, speaking of hugs, like we talked about earlier, kind of hugs right nicely in that sheath as well. Simple loop at the back, really cool carry. All right, next up, if you're not a fan of like miniature things or mini things, this is not going to be for you, but we have a bench made pen here called the shorthand. I didn't even measure this thing yet. Well, according to our website, it's about three and a half inches from tip to tail. I mean, that's pretty darn small, right? Uh, made in the USA, just over a hundred bucks for this guy. Uh, aluminum construction, I believe, yes. And you've got a bolt action, but it's not a typical bolt action that you see on other bolt action pens because it goes through both sides of the handle. They're kind of trading on their axis lock heritage a little bit. So it works from either side, which is kind of cool. Um, if I were to carry one, I'd probably carry the long hand, which gives you another couple inches <laughs> over this, I think, um, about it or just over an inch, but it feels like a lot more because this is genuinely quite small. It is manageable with one hand, but again, if you've got slightly smaller hands than I do, you're going to be doing a little bit better. As far as the cartridge, it actually uses a miniaturized, Fisher space pen cartridge. So you do have that pressurized refill so you can write upside down. They write really well through uh, like grittier paper or grimier paper, that sort of thing. Nice little option. And I do mean little. All right, next up, one more USA made product this week, a new trihone sharpener from case. The concept of course is nothing new, but getting a nicely executed version here made in the States. It's a little rarer than you might think. Uh, price, you're going to be paying a little bit of a premium for that US quality, about 82 bucks right now, but obviously still packed up in the plastic here, but everything does feel super solid. Examining all the joints, they're really nice. The base itself is a single piece of wood that has been milled out, I believe. But yeah, no joins there going on. So you've got a very stable base to rest those three grit 
or that three grit steel. What's the word I'm looking for? Rock. Triangular three grit thing to make your knife be sharp thing. Yeah, that's a... <laughs> it's super solid. Uh, three grits. I don't have the actual grit, but you've got a coarse, a medium, and an ultra fine going on right there. The ultra fine or the medium looks like an Arkansas stone to me. You've also got your honing oil included there, as well as a nice angle guide to give you a reference point as you're going to sharpen the blade, since obviously this is a freehand system. That's all we've got for today. Thank you guys for sticking around. Thanks for sticking around for, through 2021 with us as well. And we hope you uh, continue to have fun with us here in the new year. We're certainly looking forward to it ourselves. If you want to get your hands on any of these knives, we'll leave links in the description as always, and those will take you over to KnifeCenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program while you're there, because if you're going to put your money down on one of these knives today, might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas over there. We'll see you next time.